Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, dogs, and cats, and welcome back to Calm Down and Level Up. Today we are here again, holy shit, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. We're not in Millennium Dawn today. I've set up another one of our little funny scenarios where we've got Persia and Macedonia back in the world in 1936. <laughs> and I want to see if these two getting into conflict is really going to affect World War II or not. Obviously we formed Persia with Iran, and we formed Macedonia with Greece, but that's what we're going to find out in this game. Will they be able to unite? Will these two getting into a conflict with one another actually start World War II? Or will they just be another front? Or will they just sit there and do nothing? But this episode was brought to you by my patrons. If you would like to become one of them, you can check it out in the description. Thanks to my buddy Infinitum Gamer, Jeremy Houston, and the Mad King, especially the Mad King, $25 a month. Thank you very much. If you would like your name read out in the beginning of my episodes, you can go ahead and go check out my Patreon. I will be reading off your guys' names. But alright, let's get into this episode. Now, Macedonia and Persia aren't necessarily strong countries, especially Persia. Persia's got 29 factories. That's actually pretty good, I think. That's a lot more than, obviously, Iran has. They have 8 divisions, 6 military factories. But they're instantly doing German collaboration, which is probably going to bring them towards the fascists. Now, over here in Macedonia, we have a little bit of a different story. 13 divisions, 11 military factories, and more civilian factories as well. It looks like a higher manpower as well for Macedonia. So, Macedonia is the stronger country by far. But that might not stay that way. Persia, I think, might have more states. I think they have more resources. And Persia actually has its own custom focus tree. I'm using the mod called Iran Total Rework for Persia. And I don't have a mod on for Greece, because Greece will usually get involved on their own anyways. German collaboration, there it is. Now what I'm worried about with Macedonia is they might just become a little bit of a wet dream for Italy because that whole piece is quite a large piece of the Roman Empire. And if the Italians are able to conquer Greece, they won't just conquer Greece, they'll conquer the entire Macedonian Empire. Which might just make the Axis super strong seeing as Persia is moving that way. Now I know that this border in particular looks pretty bad. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to fix this though, or at least the AI will want to fix this border. There goes the Spanish Civil War. Again, I'm sure you guys are super excited for that one. Persia's now doing telegram to Hitler. I'm not sure what that means. But they're obviously taking an anti-Soviet stance. Uh, and they're probably going to be joining the Axis here. And I guess they have a choice of becoming a puppet of Germany. Or creating their own fascist faction. <laughs> the Iranian Sphere. Oh shit, top 10 anime betrayals befriend China instead of Japan for Germany. That is actually a pretty good strategy if... Japan has been losing. As Germany, you can get China to win the war pretty easily, I think. And then you basically have unlimited manpower after that. <laughs> so the Persians are building an army, it looks like. They really can't decide if they want to build that 5th division <laughs> or not. But they're going to get these divisions out pretty quick. Macedonia as well. They're um, really quickly actually building an army. Scarily fast, they, they, don't, they don't want to stop clicking more. <laughs> But the Macedonian army has jumped up to 35 divisions so far. And the Persian army up to 19. So these guys do have armies that are growing pretty quick. Alright Persia, I thought you were getting buddy-buddy with Hitler. Um, you gonna make up your mind here? I, I don't know what this means. <laughs> um, it's 1937, and the German Reich is doing war with the USSR. <laughs> um, the Spanish Civil War isn't even over yet. And you're losing it. Okay, the UK has just declared war on Persia. And the Germans are sending volunteer forces to Persia. That means they're going to be at war with the Raj, and I think that they're going to outnumber the Raj. Okay, we also have the Germans declaring war on the Soviet Union and the South Africans having their nationalist civil war, which is just Namibia, by the way, and it's led by this guy. I swear, if they join the Axis and then Germany declares war on the Allies, that would be hilarious. Wow, so just like in real life, the Persians are invading India. Uh, hopefully it goes better for them this time. They're right outside Delhi, but there is a lot of resistance. Well, wow, actually, they just encircled four British divisions up here. That's pretty incredible for the Persians. The Persians do have 35 divisions at this point, but they have 11 military factories, and they're taking on the British Empire and, and winning. National Spain was annexed. Republican Spain took 11 states. Rest in peace. There's also Italian volunteers over here, but they don't seem to be doing anything. They're just hanging out. <laughs> and look at that. Create our faction. Boom. The Iranian sphere has been formed. We'll have to see who joins into that. Oh, South Africa. <laughs> I guess it makes sense. They are both at war with the British. And they're both beating the British, apparently, so... So the UK has about the same amount of divisions as Persia right now, although the UK do have their puppets, which can help them. But I guess this is just like the fall of the British Empire, if Persia exists in this way. South Africa was annexed. Nationalist South Africa did win the war. But they are no longer at war with the British, and have left the Iranian Sphere faction. Australia joined the Allies. That that makes sense. They should, over, they should have already been in the Allies, I think. <laughs> oh, so Australia got its independence. Persia is now being pushed back for the most part. 
Um, but they still have a chance. This this naval invasion here is pretty dangerous for them. But the British are suffering. They're not doing very well. And it looks like their port was just taken. <laughs> so that could be like... If the British do only have like 35 divisions still, close to half or a third of their army, that might just all die right here. Oh, you know, I'm done. There's a naval base over here in Fars as well. <laughs> oh yeah, so Persia is really suffering at this point. I thought they were going to do good, but I think their unit templates are just bad. <laughs> so Persia might not survive as long as Macedonia in this game. Although, check this out, a bunch of Canadian divisions just got encircled over here. They're not doing too good. These guys are probably going to die. But at the same time, there's a lot of Persians over here in the mountains that are also not doing too good. And this province is the only way out, because these mountains are impassable. So they have to hold on to this, or else these guys are pocketed. Oh, look at this! Japan declared war on the Japanese People's Republic. So Japan is going communist this game. <laughs> Here's the insane troop stack around Tokyo that the communists will have to break through. So Persia at this point has zero manpower. Um, that's probably not good. We have 360,000 casualties for the Persians and 154,000 casualties for the Allies, which is actually pretty crazy if you think about it. So we have the Southwest Pacific Initiative just formed. I have actually never seen this happen before and I've never played with the new US focus tree. So I have no idea how to get it. Although I guess it could be in Australia's. Yeah, it's in Australia's. They wooed the USA, and they formed the Southwest Pacific Initiative. And now they're going to uh, preemptive intervention against Japan. <laughs> okay, Persia just dismantled its own faction and joined the Axis. And Germany instantly joined the war. I just, <laughs> I've just realized, though, there's other, there's other factions. The French Entente has just formed, as well as the Pan-Slavic Workers' Congress. Yep, that does mean Tito is in power over here in Yugoslavia. The Japanese People's Republic... Okay, hold on. Just joined the Axis as Australia declared war on them and okay so both japan's oh japan joined the southwest pacific initiative holy shit japan and america are in the same faction <laughs> in 1939 what's going on here is this hearts of iron is this even hearts of iron anymore italy joined the axis that makes sense and angelus did happen i forgot that persia being the axis probably means that they're gonna end up in war with the common turn which is right up the road <laughs> We have Romania joining the French Entente Alliance, which is pretty cool. This faction might actually do okay. And actually, Germany's doing befriend Czechoslovakia this time. So we'll probably see Czechoslovakia actually gain a fascist influence and probably join the Axis flip from the French Entente. So Persia is now doing deal with the British. Um, I'm pretty sure that just gets event Persia demands independence for our Middle Eastern colonies. I don't know what that means, but it would be really funny if the UK said yes. <laughs> But it does look like Persia is really starting to lose, although there are German troops down here now actually helping out, which could stall the British advance. And actually, look at these. They were encircled for a sec. So right now, currently sitting on the islands of Japan, um, there are three different factions. And the Axis one are the communists. And there's basically two other allies that are not working together, but they're not at war. The Soviet Union has seized Korea, as well as the Southwest Pacific Initiative, seizing a little bit of the North. The UK is so occupied in other areas that they just cannot defend Africa at all. Africa is totally falling to Italy right now, which is kind of funny to watch. <laughs> They've taken everything down to Tanzania, which has been renamed. Hirohito is back in control of the majority of his country. The communists are failing. Um, but that's just going to really mess up their tree, I guess. Now Hirohito has a generic focus tree. So he won't really be able to do much after this. The war with China is definitely not going to happen now. <laughs> so the Persians are desperately trying to defend their homeland, their giant empire. But I think the British force is just too large. Although the British focusing the British Raj is making them win there quite heavily. Um, they are losing in other areas. Like we said, Africa earlier. Well, we actually have an American naval invasion over in Italy. Oh, look at this. Nice. <laughs> Looks like the Americans are actually getting encircled, though. They have taken Venice, but the Germans are just too strong, and the Italian army's here. That's quite a lot of divisions for the Americans to lose. That was probably about five or six divisions. Republic and Spain declared war in Portugal. Well, that's interesting. Are these guys going to join factions? Because that could bring up the world tension quite a lot. So it looks like Persia joined the war against the USSR and then instantly capitulated. So Persia has capitulated. Rest in peace, little buddy. You were fun to watch. I guess Macedonia is up next, but they're not really doing much right now. They've got 85 divisions and 35 military factories now. Only 80,000 manpower, though. They've decided to do collectivist ethos, but they haven't done nationalist or interventionalism focus yet. So we're going to watch these guys either go down fascism or communism. We just don't know what yet. Well, boys, that's going to have to do it for this episode. This should be a two-parter, I guess, like maybe our last series where we formed the Balkan Union. But tell me in the comments if you have any ideas for other videos. If you like this video, make sure to hit it like, favorite, and subscribe if you guys are new. Make sure to check out my Patreon down below, and I'll see you guys all next time. Peace.